Hello guys, today we will be discussing freeze and thawing of concrete. So for that uh, we need to know what is freezing. So freezing is basically the water that is entrapped in the pores of concrete gets solidifies and turns into ice after the temperature falling zero or um, below. Whereas thawing as a result of like rising temperature, the ice in the concrete melts into the water and that is thawing. Uh, so freezing and thawing of concrete is basically a behavioral change of the water molecules in the concrete due to the changing of sur uh, surrounding temperature. So as per um, ASTM C666, we, we can perform freeze and thaw resistance to understand the behavior of concrete um, in such conditions. And for that, uh, they have given two procedures. The procedure A, that is rapid freezing and thawing in concrete, whereas in uh, procedure B, we can do rapid freezing in air, whereas thawing in water. The exposure of concrete uh, to the temperature variations that, ca uh, that cause poor water to uh, cyclically freeze and thaw leads to the disintegration of the pores structure, pore structure on account of the cycle of expansions. So for that we can say like when the, temp uh, when the water freezes at 0 degree it expands and therefore if the concrete is saturated with the water and the temperature of the atmosphere becomes such that the pore water freezes it will cause some kind of expensive stresses in the surrounding pore structures and if this cause cyclically that is uh, like the water freezes and then the uh, and then the temperature in the atmosphere rises for a period of time it thaws and freeze again and again and this is what the cyclic freeze and thawing is if that happened repeatedly uh, repeatedly over period of time uh, then the pore structure actually disintegrates and this uh, disintegration of the pore structure is freeze and thawing to understand the frost action of the hardened cement paste, water uh, when water begins to freeze in the cavity, uh, when uh, it converted into the ice, it expands by 9% of the volume. Uh, that is when the water begins to freeze in the capillary cavity, the increase in volume accompanying the freezing of water requires the dilation of the cavity uh, that is equal to 9% of the volume of frozen water or like forcing the amount of the excess water uh, through the boundaries of the specimens. So we can say like uh, during this pr uh, process hydraulic pressure is generated and the magnitude of this pressure depends on the distance of an escape boundaries. Uh, the permeability of this interweighing materials and the rate at which the ice is formed. Uh, we can say that the closed space boundaries are provided uh, by the air entraining agents uh, to control this action. So here are some examples like uh, uh, when 0% air entraining agents were there so the elongation is very high and when it is 2% uh, we can effectively reduce it to 800 whereas when we are using it to 10% there is no ap uh, appreciable dilation so uh, with the air entraining agents we can like uh, secure our concrete from freeze and thawing process. Uh, now to understand like uh, freeze and thaw process it is very important to understand like how many pores and what are the voids present in concrete. So basically there are three types of voids or uh, pores we can say like air voids, capillary voids and the gel pores. So uh, for this we have to understand like capillary tension as we know that due to capillary tension uh, meniscus forms. So here we can see say that the surface tension between the water molecules and the wall that is much greater than the surface tension between the water molecules. So and uh, like we can also say that the sharper the angle is created the higher is the capillary rise. This means that the smaller pores are more likely to be filled with water. The higher tension in the molecule makes it hard for the water to freeze. Which is very evident when we see like air voids, capillary voids and the gel pores. Through this picture you can like uh, say uh, that in capillary voids the ice formation is less and in the gel pores it is very difficult to convert the water into the ice structures. So the amount of water is more in the gel pores uh, and the amount of ice is least in the gel pores. Then there is a theory of powers which uh, gives uh, which propose like there are two types of the pressure which acts the one is hydraulic pressure which is caused by the freezing of water in the large cavities that is air voids another one is osmotic pressure that is partial freezing of the solution in the capillary voids 
सो नॉर्मली इन कॉन्क्रीट कैपिलरी वर्ड्स आर मच मच मोर देन द एयर वर्ड्स सो वाई इन कैपिलरी वर्ड्स द आइस इज आइस फॉर्मेशन इज लेस सो वी कैन से दैट द वॉटर प्रेजेंट इन द कैपिलरीज इज नॉट एक्चुअली प्योर इट कंटेन्स ऑफ सेवरल सॉल्यूबल सब्सटेंसेज सच इज एल्कली क्लोराइड और कैल्शियम हाइड्रोक्साइड दी सोल्यूशन फ्रीजेज एट अ लोअर टेम्परेचर दिन द प्योर वाटर generally uh, the higher the concentration of the salts in the solution the lower is the freezing point another reason is uh, like uh, um, the water that is held by csh that is gel pores uh, that both interlayer or adsorbed water in the gel pores in the cement paste cannot be rearranged itself to form ice at the normal freezing point of the water because the water is held very tightly rigidly and the mobility is restricted generally we can say that the more the rigidity of water is held the lower will be the freezing point and it is estimated that the water in the gel pores does not freezes above minus 78 degree celsius when saturated uh, cement paste is subjected to freezing conditions so the water in the large cavity is converted into the ice whereas water in the gel pores is converted into uh, like super cool water so this creates a thermodynamic uh, disequilibrium so the frozen water in the capillaries which is a low energy state and the super cool water in gel pores which is a high energy state so the difference in the entropy so the difference in the entropy of the ice and super cool water forces the super cool water uh, is more likely to migrate from lower energy sites where it can freeze which causes the internal pressure and expansion of the system so this is what the freeze and thawing mechanism is and here uh, i have performed uh, so we can see like uh, how concrete actually uh, be after freeze and thawing attack so this is my cycle um, and here you can see like my cubes before exposure and after exposure cycles of uh, 100 200 300 and 400 so we can say that uh, there is a conclusion that i have derived from my experimental program that is when the calcium and silica ratio is increased uh, that means it promotes the formation of the calcium alumino silicate hydrates or the calcium silicate hydrates uh, so the water held in these calcium silicate hydrate is very rigid and it cannot be easily converted into the ice so we can say that the higher the ca by si ratio uh, uh the cubes or the concrete is better in freeze and thawing performance so that is all from uh freeze and thawing i hope everything is very clear the concepts and everything